Hi, this is Scott Naismith and uh, just as I'm finished that underpainting I'm going to do a little bit of commentary and uh, there's going to be a little picture of me down here at the bottom uh, for those naughty people at work who don't realise there's some commentary going on in the background. Uh, okay, so if you've got your sound turned on uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, this painting and uh, a little bit about the concepts of what I'm trying to do with it. Uh, so it is Glencoe, the Three Sisters of Glencoe are these looming, towering mountains in the uh, west coast uh, of Scotland. Uh, as you go up uh, from Glasgow to Skye, I pass by this mountain range a lot uh, when I'm going up north, so I tend to see it uh, in a lot of different light and everything, but because of the looming nature of the the mountains themselves, that casts quite a shadow, uh, even if it's really sunny. Um, but this is a, a fairly moody day, but I wanted to um, capture this eminent light behind the mountains. And the uh, the composition was worked out on the iPad sketch at the start, and it was really really looking for this triangular wedge coming up from the uh, from the bottom of the canvas uh, to describe the middle of the three sisters. The high nature of it, there's not much sky in, in this composition but what I wanted to achieve was the feeling of this uh, towering uh, mountain range in front of you and this large expanse that you experience of the middle of those three. There's a viewpoint to the three sisters on the road which passes through through them and it's a great point at which to experience all three uh, in alignment um, and this viewpoint is so close to the middle one um, that it, the foreshortening allows the the body of this middle of the, the mountain face uh, to become exaggerated and this is the kind of barrel feeling that I wanted to get and the way I was going to achieve that uh, real depth to the, the the center of the three sisters was through a thing called atmospheric perspective. So the idea with atmospheric perspective is that the uh, intense colors would be intense only uh, in the the near portions, and the uh, as the colors dissipate, uh, they become grayed out and and more blue. And not only with uh, not only that, but the uh, the shapes would become more uh, rugged and prominent as they came closer to the viewer. Uh, so both of these are working on that barrel format of the circular uh, rock face coming towards you and encapsulating you in the scene. The idea is there's a real closeness to the face of the mountain and a real feeling that you're looking up to the peaks. You may have noticed in the uh, the time lapse demo here that the underpainting is really put on uh, quite quickly, not as quickly as it, it seems in the the video, but it's it's put down with large brushes and it's really not mucking about. It's just getting the colour down. Um, now the great thing is that there's a lot of freedom within those brush strokes. There's a, you're completely uh, not inhibited uh, at the start of a painting, and you've got to make the most of that. Uh, so I tend to do my drawing after I've done these initial uh, marks with the the brush. Um, so to completely cover the canvas, and then to begin the drawing, so that. Uh, you almost embrace the marks that you've made before the drawing starts. A lot of the time my initial marks that I make can dictate some of the uh, of the composition depending on what's happening with the paint. I like to embrace what's happening and kind of uh, feel what's happening with the paint and work around it sometimes to make the most of the bits that are working. Uh, you'll see in the left uh, of the three sisters, uh, just coming in from the left of the canvas, I begin to set out the lighter background over the top of the underpainting. Um, and that is uh, very much what I described in a previous video about negative space. So 
the initial underpainting will describe the mountain face uh, or the mountain rather than the background of sky behind it so once the sky is put on top then the, the strokes that were applied in the first place begin to be the first layer of the uh, the mountain to the left and much the same to the right there's a real feeling of, of dark to light in this painting as well I laid in those really dark blacks um, the darkest darks and laid them in large chunks to work kind of dark to light at the bottom uh, and light to dark at the top and I wanted to have that that gradation uh, to give a feeling of depth to the uh, to the the deep depths of the valley uh, compared with the uh, the lit cloud above and I wanted to get that idea that the light uh, dissipates across the the tops of the mountains and uh, the deeper that you get within the valley um, the more dark and, and deep the uh, the tones become. The palette with this one uh, very much like a lot of my current work at the moment uh, limits a lot of the colours to the CMY range um, if you've not watched it, my Truth About the Colour Wheel will uh, it will explain a lot of what I do with the colours cyan, magenta and yellow. Um, the, the green at the beginning was laid down in chunks. Large chunks of green. It, became, it, it became apparent that the uh, the three colours applied at the beginning were mixtures of uh, CMY and the uh, magenta began to um, dominate. Um, so when you have dominant magenta the the best colour to then balance that is the green and I'm just, I'm just mapping out my next colour video which is all going to be about balance uh, with colour and creating colour harmony um, it's a little uh, sort of metaphor I use with colour wheel and balance and it will be my fourth video on colour uh, which will be all about harmonies and balance and how to achieve balance within your painting using colour uh, look out for that, I don't know, it's probably going to be a t two or three weeks um, but uh, th this video should have been out a lot sooner than this but I've had a hectic January uh, which is all good uh, so stay tuned for the uh, second part of this video which will see it to its conclusion uh, please subscribe to the channel and get all the updates on all the tuition videos and demos and you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook and indeed this channel as well. Thank you.